What's up, heathens? How ya doing? Today is a special day because it's Sleeping Warrior Week. And if you guys don't know, Fight the Flat Earth is doing a special week where he's just ripping apart Anthony Riley uh, from the Sleeping Warrior channel. So uh, today we're going to be looking at another Anthony Riley Sleeping Warrior video. This time, though, he is actually going to argue for this. It is a thing. It's not just a measurement. It is a thing. Is it a force? It does seem to cause movement, doesn't it? F equals MA. If we change the volume or the density, that's going to make a, di a different density, isn't it? And then what do you know? There's displacement. So relative density must be more than what you're telling us it is, guys. It's got to be a thing, and you're not acknowledging it. So, yes, apparently he thinks that density is actually a force that replaces gravity. And he's going to be going over in this video using a teaching aid that's out there for uh, science teachers to, to use. Uh, he's going to be using that in order to make his point, but we're going to totally destroy him on it today. So, if you're interested in this bullshit and learning more about buoyancy and forces and density, then please stay tuned. Today's video went down such a storm in success. The ballers just don't accept the fact that the way it happened is the way I said it is. So I thought I'd do a little bit of research to see if there was other examples of where change in the density or the volume of an object can influence its position and will it force displacements just by changing things that are not relative to mass and or not relative to gravity. Yes, in case you guys did not know, if you change the volume of a particular object, then the buoyancy of that object will change because part of the buoyant force is the density of the object in which you are measuring. So Anthony thinks that he has some kind of gotcha here for uh, the globe model and, and for gravity in general, but he really doesn't. Because if you change the density of an object, of course its position is going to change. Because what he doesn't understand is that there is a buoyant force. And whether or not something sinks or floats, in this case it will be a balloon, whether or not that sinks to the ground or floats up is dependent upon the forces acting on it. Now, just so that you have a base level understanding and what this teacher that we're going to see here in a minute actually probably brought up prior to this particular section that he's going to show us is that there is a force of gravity, like there is a pull of gravity on that object that they're testing with. And when it rises to the top, basically the density of the object allows it to overcome the force of gravity and be pushed up. Now, when it sinks down, the buoyant force can't overcome gravity, and so it sinks. See, buoyancy is a very easy concept to understand. Well, maybe not for Sleeping Warrior Anthony Riley guy here, but for everybody else, it's pretty simple. It's the summation of the buoyant force and the other forces that are acting on an object. He mistakenly thinks that it's purely density. This next clip I'm going to show you is two, two segments from a video of a teacher teaching teachers how to teach children the science. So it's aimed at the, the adults, it's not aimed at the children. But let's just see how, it's, uh, how it destroys the idea of gravity for you fucking idiots. There is no such thing as gravity. And this proves that there is such a thing called relative density. And it does cause displacement. F equals ma if we have a, a mass that accelerates it means that there's got to be a force i would agree with anthony anthony here if there's a mass or an object that is accelerating then there is a force that is acting on that object the problem is is that anthony thinks that it's relative density when he really doesn't understand the fact that we're not changing the mass of the object or anything like that we're changing the density of the object and when the object's density changes, it has a different outcome for that summation of forces that we were talking about. In one particular situation, the buoyant force overcomes gravity and it floats to the top. In another situation, the buoyant force is weaker than the force of gravity and it sinks to the bottom. 
This is very basic science, but Anthony here has to be disingenuous about the globe position, about the actual science behind what we're about to witness. He has to be dishonest about it, just like all the other flat earthers have to be dishonest about anything that established science says. So just keep that in mind as we watch. If Newton's first law of motion is a thing, then it has to apply here, and it means relative density is a force after all. Read it and weep, dickheads. I'm sorry, but I just have to comment really quick about how ridiculous he's being at this point. <laughs> when he says, read it and weep, dickheads. I mean, honestly, it's so funny because he misrepresents the information so hard and he misunderstands the concepts that are going to be presented. I don't know. It's just incredibly hilarious to me. I can leave this up for a few days, but even a mylar balloon over time loses some helium, so the second day I may have to take off one of the paper clips, or I've even cut paper clips in half just to get the right mass to hold the balloon down. Yes, this woman does say mass instead of weight because mass is calculated in weight. And so since you can't change the force of gravity, you have to change the amount of mass that something has in order to affect its weight. But he is being totally disingenuous with his little disclaimer here about how she's not talking about weight. Weight is indeed a force, and mass is used to calculate weight using gravity. That's why we weigh different weights on different planets, because they have a different acceleration due to gravity. I mean, this is basic fucking science there, Anthony. This is just a heat gun. It's a paint stripping gun. Okay, it's like a hairdryer, except it doesn't blow as much air and it gets hotter. And so what I'm going to do is heat the balloon. Now, what I, I don't tell the kids this because it's going up and down several times, but what I want them to focus on and what the questions lead them to without being too blatant is what they're looking for is that the volume is going to increase. So right here, I've got a section of balloon that I've intentionally collapsed a little extra. So we're going to look at that section of the balloon as I heat it. And we should be able to see that as I heat the balloon, the air inside is going to increase in temperature. And that collapsed section of the balloon is going to fill. And as it fills, and of course we don't tell the kids this right away either. Sometimes you have to help them a little bit. As that fills, we've increased the volume without increasing the mass. And therefore the density should decrease. Again with this fucking disclaimer here. Yes, she said mass because we can't change gravity. We have to change the amount of mass. And what she's doing here, she's heating up a helium balloon, making the volume much bigger than it was, which in turn makes it a less dense object. This is going to affect the position of the object because it affects the buoyancy of the object. Now, the buoyant force that's pushing up on this object is going to be greater than the gravitational force that is pulling down on it. But Anthony Riley, again, thinks that it's because the density changes that it does this. While the density does change, and that is the primary reason why it ends up floating and why the equations change in general, but it's because of the summation of the forces that are acting on that balloon which are affected by the change in density. Anthony is disingenuously presenting this to us as if density is the cause for all this and that the forces acting on the balloon have no effect whatsoever because buoyant force doesn't exist and gravity doesn't exist. Density should decrease, she says. She does not say that there was a force of buoyancy. If the masses remain the same, even little g is a constant as gravity is meant to be inversely proportionate to the mass of the object, right? No mass was lost, but it moves. F equals ma. Relative density is a force. No! Relative density is not a force. It's just a measurement. The forces that are acting on this balloon are the buoyant force and gravity. Now, yes, of course, the woman here is not discussing how it's actually the summation of the buoyant force and gravity that causes the movement of the balloon. But this would have been brought up previous to this session as sort of a foundation for understanding these fluid dynamics. 
Anthony conveniently cuts this out. This is a continuation of a previous lesson, a more extensive lesson on the basics of all of this fluid dynamics that we're talking about here. But of course, he only wants to use this in order to push his whole density as a force thing. So yes, Anthony, there is a force, or forces rather, at work here, and it's buoyancy and gravity. As it shrinks, the volume changes without the mass changing, and therefore the density decreases. The volume changes without the mass changing, and therefore the density decreases. The volume changes without the mass changing, and therefore the density decreases. You know, honestly, I love how he feels like he has to repeat things for us because we're the dense ones. <laughs> I mean, we're not the dense ones here. We understand the science, okay? And so let me explain the science to you real quick. She's talking about how the mass doesn't change, but the density changes. Density is a prime component of the buoyancy formula and would be a prime component of the summation of the forces that are acting on that balloon. So yes, it seems really remedial to state this, but if you change any one particular factor in an equation, it will change the outcome of the equation. This is basic fucking math shit, Anthony. I don't know why you think this is some kind of gotcha thing. It's not. Heavier and therefore more dense. So we should be able to get that eyedropper to sink all the way to the bottom. But wait, the rumpus tells everybody that weight is a force, density is not a force. So how is this getting to the bottom if uh, gravity is doing it? Ah, yes, very good question there, Lily. So gravity isn't the only thing that is at work here. Like I've been harping on this entire time and what seems like you need repeating is that it's a summation of the forces that are acting on that particular ketchup packet. And in the summation of forces, gravity is a key component in both sets of equations, like in the buoyancy and in just the general like force of gravity. Gravity is a prime component and just because it doesn't like change or anything like that doesn't mean that we can't affect the outcome of that equation. He seems to think that since gravity is not the one being changed, that it can't be the thing that is pulling things down, but it is the primary thing that pulls things down. The buoyant force is actually pushing up on it. That's how the buoyant force works. And if you would have watched this teacher's previous lessons on fluid dynamics, I'm sure that she would have explained this basic fucking concept to you. Changing inside, isn't it, boys and girls? And the rumpus would have you believe that it was gravity that was doing it. I seriously doubt anybody whatsoever would tell you that it's primarily gravity that is controlling that situation. They would tell you that gravity is the reason why things fall down or anything like that. But Anybody that knows what you're actually contesting here would tell you that it's the summation of the forces, including buoyant, the buoyant force and gravity. So it's not just gravity there, dipshit. Clearly not. By putting the pressure in, it compresses the, the gas inside the teat pipette, and that forces the density to change, which then in turn makes it displace, just like the salt water in the egg. Where is the gravity? Where is the gravity? The gravity is a prime component of the buoyant formula as well as weight, which is a, a, another thing here uh, that plays uh, into it. So gravity being a prime component of both weight and the buoyant formula means that it is a prime factor in this entire setup, you fucking idiot! Gravitol was a constant and it didn't cause shit, did it? wrong. I would say that it's a prime component of this entire situation, but it's not the only prime component or the only component in general. So gravity does cause things to fall down, and it is a major factor in this experiment here, but it's not the only factor. I feel like I have to keep repeating myself because you're just not fucking getting it. Now wait a minute, the ketchup packet is also sinking. Why would the ketchup packet sink? I'm not pumping water into the ketchup packet, so I'm not increasing the mass of the ketchup packet. Packet, I must be changing the other thing that affects density, which would be volume. So basically with this particular experiment, she's pumping air into a bottle of water. And as you pump air into that bottle of water, it is going to increase the pressure on that volume of water. 
So as that volume of water gets smaller and smaller, the density is going to be, the density is going to be increasing and increasing. At the same time, the ketchup packet is going to experience pressures that cause the volume to decrease and thus cause the density to increase. So that is why the ketchup packet falls down. Nobody would tell you that it's weight that causes this. It's pressure and density that causes these things. That is what this experiment is trying to show you, but you're uh, trying to use this as to say that weight is in a force. Weight is a force and gravity definitely has an effect on this particular experiment. So it's changed the volume, which has changed the density of the, and the medium in which it's in, then changes its, uh, its relative density to the new density caused by the volume change. And there's a displacement and it's the change in the density that's doing it. It's got nothing to do with gravity, has it? Oh my god, yes it does! Oh fuck, where's my- ah, I hurt myself, hold on. Jesus fucking Christ. God damn, why are you such a fucking idiot? Misleading people by telling everybody that it's to do with weight, because weight's a force. Let's listen to her next two or three sentences. Yes, weight is a force. And no, you're wrong about density being a force. Uh, basically what it amounts to is, is that Anthony Riley doesn't understand what an actual force is. Yes, there is an acceleration on the, these objects as they're sinking or floating, but this is easily explainable with the buoyant force and with gravity and how those forces interact with each other to create buoyancy. So it's rather funny how he keeps harping on about this. He thinks that he keeps proving his point, but he really doesn't. I have the original video linked in the description below, so if you want to go and check it out, I highly suggest that you do, and leave him a comment that Godless Engineer says that he's full of fucking shit. Thank you, heathens, for joining me today. I gotta get out of here, but you guys need to go on over and check out Fight the Flat Earth. He set up this Sleeping Warrior Week. A lot of us in the debunking community are, are following suit and posting these types of videos, so definitely go check out Fight the Flat Earth and anybody else that's shitting on Sleeping Warrior this week. Before you head out though, make sure you go down below and leave me a comment. I would love to hear what you guys think about this video. And hey, why don't you smash that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of dipshittery. Don't forget to stand up and use your voice and I will see you heathens later.